Hello, welcome back to West Wiltshire Radio Indie Podcast. I am Steve Fenwick. Uh, I am joined in the studio by Matt Eaton, the lead vocalist in The Pure Conjecture. Matt, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, great to be here. Great to have you here. Well, it's been a while since we uh, last spoke. I think it was maybe 2006 at the 100 Club when your, your first band, Brighter Lunch, were, were out touring but since then you've been a busy boy Matt haven't you you've 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 got your finger in quite a few pies you've you're now living in Wales is that right? I I uh about eight months ago I moved to uh, to Cardiff and uh, yeah it's a lovely place a beautiful city. Wicked well uh we're here today to talk about the new record which is called Jondras uh it's it's the second album by the Pure Conjecture and uh it's coming out on uh a label based in Glasgow called Armelli Records, it says here. So do you, want, do you want to just start by telling us a little bit about the Pure Conjecture and how that works? Because they're not a conventional band um, as such, are they? It's a kind of, you have a, a revolving door policy and, and you guys don't really play live uh, often. So would you mind telling us a little bit about how that works? Aye, well, the the way it works is uh, the Pure Conjecture aren't a group in the uh, traditional sense, uh, you know, mm. uh, it's kind of... See, I like albums. Uh, you know, they say, if music be the food of love... What, what not? See, if music was food, and I was mm. hungry and I went out to a restaurant, I would want that music cooked in a kitchen by some cooks and then brought out to my table by a waiter or a waitress and served I want my music mm. served to me on an album sure that's how I like it done sure uh, yeah. so it's how I like it served okay. what I'm trying to say is see if you went out say if somebody calls you up and says you want to go for a drink and you say ah, I'll meet you <laughs> yes uh, please <laughs> I mean, it's so and so bar at eight o'clock, and you get there, and it's heaving. Very busy bar. You fight your, you, mm. you get your way to the bar, and you order your drinks, and they get, and eventually they turn up, and and the drinks are served in plastic cups. Mm. I wouldn't like that. No. I know the drinks the same. I know it's the same drink, but I see if I order a drink, I want it served in a glass, made out of glass. And so you see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to get at here is the pure conjecture operates very much on that same principle, except the glass doesn't go away on tour or do any gigs. Right. Cool, man. Well, you know, whatever works for you, uh, you have to go with, right? Um, but can we... Can we pause for a moment and, uh, you know, for our, our younger listeners, can, can you tell us a little bit about who is Matt Eaton? And uh, can, we, can we delve into the past? <laughs> um, can we, cause I, mean, I know you've been in a few bands over the years, uh, uh, the aforementioned Brighter Lunch, there was Actress Hands, and, you, and you've had uh, solo albums out on, on Drift Records. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that, that, that period, Matt? Uh, how did I get to be, or what did I do before I was in the Pure Conjure? Oh, thank yeah. you very much. That's very kind of you. Ah, lovely. Cup of tea. Uh, oh, that's a bloody good cup of tea. Thank you for yeah. that. Thank you. That's a lovely cup of tea. That was a couple of wee biscuits here as well. Hmm. Oh, lovely. I'm just going to have a wee more on a second. Please do. We uh, look after our guests here. Yeah. Ah, ah, bit dry, bit crumbly. Oh. Mm. They're like the, uh, you know, the biscuits that you get in, uh, when you go away abroad on your holidays. Uh, mm. Hut, they're called hut biscuits. I've never heard of hut biscuits. 
a nice bit of crumbly. The chocolate in the middle is nice one. Oh, hang on, I don't care what you do. Wait a minute. Let's go to dump this in the tea. Mm. Hold on. Okay. Ah, there you go. Much nicer. Okay. That chocolate already comes through. This will melt it a wee bit in the tea. So. That is a bloody good cup of tea, that. Lovely. Oh, he's, he's, he's well versed, mm, shall we say. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, oh, no, what was the question again? Um, what was I doing before I was in the Pure Conjecture? Yes. Oh, well, I was in a couple of groups. Uh, one was called Brighter Lunch. Uh, then I started another group called Actor Sands. But essentially, you know, I made a couple of solo records. But mm -hmm. uh, essentially, nobody was listening. So I started the Pure Conjecture. And now uh, I have got a wee audience. Mm. So that's, that's, that's lovely. Happy days. <sighs> ah, which reminds me, you are listening to... Hmm. West Wiltshire Radio Indie Podcast. Number 37 with myself, Steve Fenwick. I'm joined today by uh, Matt Eaton, lead vocalist in the Pure Conjecture. Uh, we've, we've, Matt, we've discussed various things. Can we can we hear a little bit about, about the, the Pure Conjecture themselves? How does that work? I mean, there's uh, potentially uh, quite a number of individuals in, involved, and I imagine that must be quite a, a task to, to manage, and, you know, dare I say, a few egos to, to keep in check. Uh, how, how do you stop the, the chef from spoiling the broth, so to speak? Uh, I well imagine the uh, the recording studio is a garage. Okay. And I turn up to the garage uh, in a sort of skeleton car that I've put together with, you know, bits of other cars that I've had lying around. Hmm. And you know it kind of looks all right. It doesn't quite work, but you know you get a sense that this could be a pretty nice car if we've did it up. Yeah. Sure. And she, I, you know, I reverse the car into the garage, and all the mechanics are there, and I say, right, we got three days. Let's make a really nice car. Mm -hmm. So in uh, three days, I then drive the car out of the garage, and people will be looking at it, going, "Wow, that's a nice car. I'd like to drive that car. Mm. I'd, I'd like to buy that car." You know, I want people to say that, and so we've got three days to make that happen, and uh, so all the all the musicians turn up with jacks and spanners and spray paint, and we get to work. Mm -hmm. And after that three days, that's it. The car goes out, and that's the finished car. Whatever the car looks like when I drive out after three days, that's Boom. it. Yeah, I kind of have people turning up late. We are baggy wheel nuts saying you know oh hi hi everyone I, I thought it'd be cool if we do you think we should have some wheel nuts on it I thought we could add some wheel nuts no. I can't have that it's no. too late for wheel nuts the car's gone yeah you know and now we're in a situation where somebody's going to be going uh, you know two two months down the line somebody said oh have you had that new Pure Conjecture record? And people go, oh, aye, yeah, it's brilliant, I loved it. But about two thirds of the way through it, the wheels come off. Mm. I can't have that, you know, that's not what I want. The car's got to be finished well, in that three days. It's a bloody nightmare, so, yeah. uh, You know, it's no going back into the garage after that three days, so that's kind of the way it works. And I mm. think that that kind of time frame, keeping it quite compact, that's good for the mechanics, because, uh, you know, it creates a nice working atmosphere in the in the in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> so no fisticuffs then. No, no, no fisticuffs. The atmosphere was That's great. And, you know, I I just enjoyed watching different combinations of musicians who had never played together before. You know, yeah. making musical and real hmm. life friendships during that session. And the uh, the first album, Corn Shets, was made in a very short period of time, wasn't it? Um, the way you talk about it, it was a short, sharp process. So was it therefore a relatively painless one? It was a painless process, aye. It was very, apart from the saxophone player got his saxophone stolen. Oh, that's from awful. From outside the studio. But even that oh. had a nice outcome, because, you know, he, 
we had advert, adverts put in the paper, we did an internet campaign. They got returned to him, got found in a music shop in Eastbourne. Amazing. So even that had a nice outcome, you know, it was very painless yeah. and the the, out, the actual results we got were uh, just better than we could ever have hoped, hoped for or expected. You know, not unlike going into hospital for, you know, reconstructive cosmetic surgery after mm-hmm. an accident and once you come out from under the knife and take the bandages away from bandages. off your head and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're even better looking than you were before you had the mm. crash. Mm. How did the writing and the recording process of, of, uh, of genres differ from that? I will, instead of me writing the songs, making demos in my studio and then going to, uh, you know, in inverted commas, proper studio, mm. this time around I did the whole thing in my studio where, that I, I have, I shared with my pal. And uh, so I was kind of like the producer this time around as well as a writer and singer. And uh, cool, I did a lot more playing of instruments on this one, you know, I tried to learn how to play the cornet. You know, a, a, a scoring for a quartet, string quartets, not stuff I hadn't done before. Oh, wicked! Uh, you know, I had the time to go down kind of funny avenues and make crazy decisions, and you know, and also there was the added kind of confusion of halfway through the recording, I took six months away from it to go away and had a had a job uh, co-writing a score in an opera, which was a whole different story. Right, wow. And then came back to genres and, you know, so it's had it had that influence on it as well. So mm. hopefully it's a very different uh, record, you know, in both mood and sonically. I certainly think so. But also one that you could listen to, if you had the time, you could listen to courgettes and genres back to back and still enjoy the fact that it's the same voice, the same band, the same... Uh, the philosophy. Hmm. Well, and you know, the title itself isn't something you you might see uh, on on your shelf in HMV of every day of the week. Can can you explain a little bit about the uh, etymology of genres, and uh, you know, just just why you, you chose that specific title, Matt? I will. Well, there's a, a short answer to that question and a long answer. Uh, the long answer is. Uh, about two years ago, I went down to the southeast of France and uh, for a few days. And while I was there, I got taken out to this bar where they were having a kind of a, like an open mic now, you know, people getting up and singing chansons, uh, telling jokes and stories and that, and, you know, lovely, great, great okay. place, great atmosphere. And I was enjoying all this. And one thing was, uh, it sort of confusing me a bit when, see, when someone told a funny joke or they sang a song they all liked, they sh- everybody would sh- shout out, genres. Genres, genres. Yeah. And I was like, what genres? You know, I've never heard I, I thought, because, you know, like anybody else, I thought in France they said, you know, if they liked something at a show, shout out encore or, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in France they say encore. In Italy they say bravo, you know. In Scotland we say, you know, go on yourself or into them right. or whatever. Okay. But... This, uh, this was interesting, I thought, genres, I've never heard that, and uh, anyway, as the night went on, and my, my, the folk I was there would say, oh, come on, you write songs, get up there and sing, you know, sing a couple of your songs, you know, I had a couple of drinks, oh, go on, you know, uh-huh. went up there, sang a couple of songs, nothing, no genres, just, I just finished and walked off, he didn't, sheepish, went to the bar, so, oh no, how did I get talked into that? Because I'm no acoustic guy, you know, no. I don't like doing it that way. And uh, there was, uh, you know, I, I tried to forget about it and had a drink and that. And then a, a guy came up to me and said, can I buy you a drink? In French, he said it, I can't mind what it would be. He wanted to buy me a drink. I said, I thank you. And then he stood and faced me and he took both of my horns in his horns. Oh, you mean hands, okay? 
looked me in the eyes directly and he said, Chandra's. Chandra's. And then he walked away. And that was a beautiful moment. What he was yeah, trying wow. to tell me was, they didn't like you. They didn't like your songs. I did. I liked them. And he gave me a one-to-one genres, and it, it was moving, and it stuck in my mind. I thought, that's a lovely thing. I, my, I'm, I'm going to call my record genres. So that's the, that's the long answer. Cool. Uh, the short answer is it's just a mix of the word genre and the word genders. So, Cool. Okay, a bit of a tricky one now. Uh, just what are you trying to achieve with, uh, with the record genres? What am I trying to achieve with genres? Uh, is a good question. Um, see, in my however many years I've been involved in music, I've had one phrase over and over again from producers, engineers, managers, labels, songwriters, musicians. They all use this one phrase. I've heard it so many times. The song is king. Mm, yeah. Now, I don't agree with that. No. I don't like that phrase at all. I think it's unhealthy. I don't think there is a king. And see, if there was a king, it wouldn't be the song. I think it's more like, the, I can better explain it like this. An artist's body of work that they achieve over their lifetime is like, the, that's the concept of monarchy. Albums are the current head of state. The songs are princes and princesses. Hmm. And the people who listen to the record, buy the record, are the subjects. Hmm. Now, what I'm hoping is the subjects will go out and they buy up all the hundred copies of the CD of the current head of state and see if that happens, then there's every chance that Armeldi Records will allow the concept of monarchy to continue into next year. Because, hmm. you know, I'm, I'm of the opinion that these are nine of the loveliest princes and princesses I've ever written. Cool. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve here with uh, genres. Hmm. So uh, a wee laddie, uh, Faye Alloa, um, picks the guitar up and he, and he, and he writes some songs and he, and he ends up in Wales. Uh, how does he end up putting his music out on a Glasgow-based label? Can you elaborate on your relationship with Armeldi Records uh, a little bit more for us? I mean, how, how did that one evolve? Well, let me take you back to the year uh, 2006. I was on it, tour yeah. with a group, working for a group, and the tour took us all the way up to Scotland where we played at King Tut's famous venue in Glasgow, and the support band that night were a group called Lorino Amps. And these four characters made their way up into our dressing room and introduced themselves and straight away I thought I had four new friends for life. Al, Scott, Lindsay, and Jason, no so much. Yeah. But these were great, you know, lovely people, very funny, friendly, interesting. I love these guys. So I... Uh, Alan Scott, obviously, are the two guys who run our Melody Records now, and we've stayed friends, and they rang me up when Courgettes, the first Pure Conjecture record, was finished, it was made, asked if they could have a wee listen, and agreed to put it out. Great, Same man. thing, when Jondras was ready, said, can we have a wee listen? What do you need? Need it mastered? We can do that. Need a sleeve? Sort it. Very efficient, great guys. It's always a fun process with them. And you know, the thing about our melody, it's, it's, it's a label, but it's no label. It's more like a stable, where you're able to take something to the table and they'll look at it, listen to it, and do a great job getting it out there and heard by as many people as possible mm. and creating a wee that's, little that's what you want, yeah. cultural event. Uh, that I'm happy, and me and my group, we're, all, we're happy to be involved in it. It's fantastic. Hmm. Busy boys. So... Uh, they obviously have quite a large output then, do they? I Well, I think they're up to about 30-odd releases now, and, it, you know, there's lots of interesting stuff on the label, you know, lots of different stuff. You know, you've got your crazy, wild stuff like the, you know, your gastric band and the Kill the Captains. 
mm. who have got a new album out called Sounds Mean that sounds great. Nice. And then you've got your classic melodicists like the Hazy Janes out of Dundee. Mm. Then you've got uh, 30 Pounds of Bone oh, Johnny recently Hatt. put an Good album life, out yeah. which is kind of like folk music, kind of Irish, Scottish folk music. But no, like the... It's got an element of traditional, but there's something new, something very strange and deep going on with them. And it's mm. the, you know, it's kind of, what I'm saying is kind of, a, it's folk music, but there's mm. a lot more to it than that. You know, yeah, 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 it's yeah. not like, you know, Mull of Kintyre mm. or anything like that. Hmm. I've always wondered what the, the Mull of Kintyre actually is. I, I mean, I know there's an island called Kintyre and, and of course, the, the Isle of Mull. But what, what exactly is the Mull of Kintyre? That's a very good question. Mm. A mull is a tip. So the mull of Kintyre is the tip of Kintyre. Hmm. So what's the tip of mull called then? It's called the Aron Peninsula. Is it really? Hmm. So let's gaze into the crystal ball, if we may. Uh, what do you have coming up in the future? Any, any plans? Well, hopefully the future uh, will bring me back here to talk to you in a year's time, time fair, about yeah. the third Pure Conjecture record, which we're in the middle of writing at the moment. Me and Darren Moon from the group are writing it together. And, uh, you know, it's got the working title of uh, More Genres. Really? No, it's no. That's a oh. joke. Uh, but, you know, the future's unwritten. I don't know what's happening tomorrow. You don't. That's what makes it so exciting, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Let me leave, with, well, let me leave you with this wee bit of wisdom. I always say... The future as an unopened present. And today I'm asking for the gift of music. Or something like that. I can't, I can't mind exactly what I say. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's leave it there. I'm, yep. I've got to go, so uh, time's up. Uh, lovely talking to you again, Steve. Wow. And you too, mate. look forward to seeing you again soon, pal. Cheery. Oh, fantastic stuff. Well, all that's left to say is Matt Eaton, thanks for joining us in the studio. It's been a pleasure, as always. Uh, good luck with the new record, Jundra's out on our Melody Records. We'll be back next month for our September edition. Until then, I'm Steve Fenwick, and you're listening to West Wiltshire Radio's Indie Podcast. Stephen Fenwick's West Wiltshire Radio Indie Podcast.